This video has been a long time in the making since pretty much my Switch collection video a few months ago where I showcased my custom Joy-Cons which I made myself. I've been getting asked for a tutorial by you lovely people but I just never really felt like I was qualified to teach you guys to be honest and there are tons of videos already on YouTube that might be helpful for you. I posted a video on the turquoise and white Joy-Cons that I made I think over a year ago now but that wasn't exactly a tutorial so I finally thought that I would try and redeem myself this time around. Hopefully help some of you or at the very least satisfy the curiosity of the ones that wanted to see how I do it myself. At this point I think I've done this over a couple dozen times for myself, for family, and even a couple custom commissions locally just for fun. <laughs> I personally haven't broken a single Joy-Con yet doing it this way, but just as a disclaimer, please only do this at your own risk, okay? Okay. <laughs> I was going to use a different shell for this tutorial, but as some of you probably already recognize from the thumbnail, this pair is a little bit special because I'm going to be making the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Joy-Cons, which are supposed to be coming out July this year. Long story short, I do have a pre-order secured, thankfully, from Amazon.ca, but I do understand that the pre-order sold out almost immediately, at least that I know of in North America, with no news yet at the time that I'm filming this if they are going to be releasing more of the Joy-Cons. So I thought it would be fun to try and do it myself before Nintendo releases it because mostly because I was bored. <laughs> but this might also be a good option for those of you who can't get a hold of it on retail and we don't want to give our money to scalpers. So, you know. <laughs> These shells were only $10 and the quality is insanely good. I can't wait to do a side-by-side -side comparison once I receive the originals from Nintendo. But before we get started, hey, my name is Kat. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thank you so much for joining. We love talking about the Nintendo Switch here and other gaming and good vibes. So if you're not already, please consider sticking around and subscribing. And while I have you, I might as well do some shameless plugging as well for my brand new merchandise, which I'm wearing for you today. This is one of my first designs and by no means am I a pro artist, but I wanted to design my merch myself because I wanted to add a personal touch to it to show you guys how much I appreciate you. It was very much a labor of love, so I really hope you guys like it and more designs are on its way very soon. You can shop it on my YouTube merch shelf and also in the link below. Okay, so what you'll need is, of course, your pair of Joy-Cons that you will be doing the reshell to. These are the turquoise ones that I shared on my channel as well just over a year ago. As much as I've really enjoyed this one, the white buttons and the lighter colored shells do pick up dirt a little bit easier, so although I've kept it decently clean, I think it's pretty deserving of a refresh, and so these are the pair that I'll be using for this tutorial. Of course, you'll also need your new shells, and if it didn't come with your Joy-Con shells, you'll also need your own tools. For the Joy-Cons, you really only need two types. The first one being a PH00, and the second is a Y00. I got this from a really cheap set from Amazon, which also included a plastic um, spudger and a pair of tweezers, which do come in handy for the little ribbon cables. Now this pair I found from eBay. The listing was taken down very shortly after I received it. So I'm not sure if that was Nintendo cracking down their whip, but these just came with the shells themselves and also the SL and SR buttons. If you're looking for a wider range of options for shell designs or even buttons, I highly recommend Extreme Rate. Here is a set that I've yet to use. Theirs actually come with a new set of buttons as well as the tools and extra screws for the Joy-Cons. I'm not sponsored or affiliated in any way, but I've actually been using Using their shells since my very first shell swap for my first switch which is this really beautiful NES set right here and I've been using them since 2018 I guess it is <laughs> and they actually also made the shell for my glacier blue switch light which I always get asked about so I will be leaving links to extreme raid below if you are wanting to check them out so on to the tutorial I'm going to start with the left joy-con just because this one doesn't have the sensor which makes it a little bit quicker to do although this one isn't that much more difficult it'll just be easier to get this out of the way so first thing to do is grab your tri-tip screwdriver and get rid of the four screws 
screws on the back of the shell. By the way, if you can't tell, I am using a paper towel just to catch all the screws. I know there are desk mats that are specifically for taking apart electronics, but since, you know, I'm not really a pro or anything, I just find myself using whatever's around in my home to help me and it works really well. So I find that this works better for me and have saved me so many times from losing a rogue screw. So now that these four screws are off, I can start taking apart the Joy-Con just by the rail and it comes apart like so. And be very careful because there is a ribbon cable attached between the Joy-Con itself and the rail. What you'll do first is detach this rail from this shell. And you do so by removing just one screw with your Phillips screwdriver. And it comes off like so. Be very careful because there is a button right here. So I'm just gonna set this aside as is for now. We will need that button afterward to put into the new shell. So now I'm going to lift the battery. If you are taking it from the OEM shell, there might be a little bit of adhesive between the battery and the shell, but as long as you're very careful, you can peel it off no problem. So I'm just going to gently lift that and set it aside and then using the end of my spudger here, I'm just going to use that to pry the motion sensor like so and just get that out of the way as well. So I know I've seen other tutorials that actually unplug these, but I want to personally do the least amount of disassembly so I don't have a lot to reassemble as well. From this point, all you'll need is just the Phillips screwdriver and you'll get rid of three gold screws here, here and here. And now be very careful when you're lifting this part up because there is a ribbon cable attached right here. So I'm just going to twist that over like so. And then I'm going to remove this ribbon cable because I do want to swap this shell for the centerpiece of that one. So there's a little latch right here that you can just pop up, a little black part. And then you can very carefully slide the ribbon cable out. Here is a closer look at the cable. We will set this aside for now. For the bottom part, we're already somewhat halfway there. I'm going to take the new shell. I'm just going to push down onto this and pop it up. There's going to be a spring that will come out. And then at this point, I don't actually want to use the white buttons. I'm going to put back the OEM buttons that we had to make it as close to the original Skyward Sword Joy-Cons as possible. For this side, we actually just need the arrow buttons. If you're transferring it from an original Joy-Con to this, it would be a little bit easier because you can just essentially lift this up and transfer all the buttons over. But since I will be putting it back from <laughs> my graveyard, of OEM parts, I'm just gonna do it a little bit differently. Each button actually has these little grooves that I'm hoping you're able to see. I don't know if my camera's focusing. Those grooves actually correspond to a specific hole in the shell so that you can't actually confuse yourself by putting it on the wrong way. So this button happens to fit in that groove and it would not fit in the other holes at all. Here is what it should look like once it's all in. It helps you a little bit to have it elevated so that the buttons aren't pushing back out if it's against the table. So I'm just leaving it on the container right here. The next thing that you will do is take your Phillips screwdriver again, and we're going to remove all three screws at the top right here with the ribbon cables, the two remaining screws here on the board. And then once we lift this up, the screws for the thumbsticks as well. I'm just lining up all the screws at the top here so I know to go pretty much in reverse order once we're doing the reassembly. Okay, and once that's off, you can carefully lift this part up to reveal the other screw for the thumbstick, which we'll be removing. So now pretty much nothing is holding this down onto the shell anymore. We can lift it up and then we just need to grab a couple more things before we can transfer it over to the other board. You can very slowly just push out the thumbstick from the bottom, just being mindful of the little cables here because it is so tiny. So I'll just lay that down and then we're gonna go ahead and grab these membranes. But as I was saying earlier, actually at this point, if you're using OEM Joy-Cons, you can just easily have both of them open side by side and just transfer the buttons onto the new shell shell.
don't forget the little minus button because I did that one time and it wasn't fun to disassemble everything again. And just securing the membranes back down, being very careful that I'm not pushing the buttons back up from underneath. We're almost done here. I'm gonna move this out of the way because we don't need this. I can now pretty much move this over here and secure that down. Relay everything the way it was from the first shell. Once we're at this point, we're just gonna put back all the screws that were once here. I'll just have that elevated again. And first going back in with the thumbstick. Okay, nice and secure. I'm just gonna put down the two screws on the board here so that the buttons can be held down and the three screws here for the ribbon cables. We're pretty much just doing everything in reverse at this point, so I think the reassembly should be the easiest part. Let's just do a quick check, and it is looking amazing, oh my goodness. Well, we have one last step before we can put everything back together for this Joy-Con, which is the middle rail right here. So what we need to do is grab a piece right here, this part might be a little bit tricky the first time that you do it, but you just have to be able to pry off this button. I like to use this budger for this, and there's a spring under there, so be careful. You're gonna hear a click, and it's gonna sound like you broke something, but I promise you didn't. <laughs> what we need from here is just this ribbon cable. I'm gonna put the springs to the side, and we're just gonna transfer it exactly as we see it onto the new shells. It just has one screw. Probably one of the trickiest parts, <laughs> at least it was for me, especially when I first did this and you can actually see me struggling when I shared my experience with reshelling the turquoise toy cons. So it'll be a little bit challenging to show you, but there are little grooves right here and here where you have to replace these springs like so. I hope you can see the springs now on there. And you're going to align the same grooves here on the springs. So it's gonna be really hard to show you on camera, but I will definitely try. So just align the grooves into the springs and then once it's all aligned, just click it back in and just do a quick check on the sides that the springs are where they're supposed to be and they didn't come off and you're supposed to have a nice clicky shoulder button. Okay, we are nearing the home stretch for the first Joy-Con. I hope you guys are still following along with me, okay? I'm gonna put back this ribbon cable onto the board now, just sliding in very, very carefully. So just the reverse way that we went um, when we took it out, but putting that back in and then making sure to shut that latch back down. Next, I'm going to need another spring. This will be for the other shoulder button. There's a little cross here where you want to put your spring on like so and then we just want to align it back where it was earlier there is a groove where the spring sits almost done so now we'll just carefully flip this back and fit it where it should go and it should just very easily slide right in and now we're going to put back the same three screws here here and here Flip the battery back, making sure that the wire is going to the direction where the open gap is there at the bottom, and then we'll just pop the rumble back in. Now we have to tackle the SL and SR buttons. But if you've gotten this far, this will be a piece of cake in comparison to the others. So there's a purple and a blue one. I think that they should be matching each Joy-Con color, right? I'm just gonna assume, yes. <laughs> For this one, all you need to remove are two screws right here, still using the Phillips. So we're going to pull this out and remove the rubber membrane, which we will need. Same with the other one, of course. SR goes here, SL goes here. These buttons again have their own respective notches, so there's no way for you to mix it up and um, put it into the wrong side. Buttons are in and we're just going to put this piece back on. If you don't want to replace the S, L, and S, R buttons, you can completely skip this step. Let's grab the back piece. We're just going to get the little black button, pop that into the new shell. 
we're going to screw the Joy-Con rail back on so it just fits really easily like that. Looking good. And now we're just going to slide the Joy-Con rails back in to the second shelf. This is pretty much perfectly in line with everything. So the very last step, oh my goodness, back to the tri-tip screwdriver. We're going to put back the last four screws on the outside. And there's our first Joy-Con. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. <gasps> Wow. Okay, before I spend too much time just admiring that, let's move on to the right shell. I have my Joy-Con here. I'm going to take off that cover. Everything is pretty much going to be the same with disassembling this one besides the part about the sensor. So I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. Remove the Joy-Con rail. Be careful with that button. I'll just set that aside again. So right away you will see one difference here where you'll see this extra wire that is right beside the battery. So just carefully pop that out. And also the rumble. With this one, you remove the three screws here, here, and here. Being very careful with the ribbon cable on the right Joy-Con because it's much shorter than the previous one. So I'm just going to lift it and actually carefully twist it like so which will reveal where the ribbon cable is attached. Now we're just going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to lift up the lock and carefully slide it out. There we go. As you can see, the cable is much shorter in this one. We're going to set this aside again until we get to that point. Removing the shoulder buttons and the spring. For this part, we're removing two screws on the board and two screws on the thumbstick. I'm going to get my shell ready now and I'm just going to use this again to prop it up. I will be using OEM um, buttons for this part again, so I will just be right back. So just like with the other buttons, these have notches on the side as well. Now we have them all on. So now because this does have the sensor part, which the other one did not have, just be very careful um, not damaging it, but you can just go ahead and lift it up like so. And everything should come up as well. Just give the thumbstick a little help and push it from below. And there's going to be like a metal frame, which you'll just get, need to get from underneath and that should completely pry up from the shell there. This metal frame is connected to the sensor. Grab the membranes and other buttons once more. And the last membrane. And pretty much now drop this back into the shell just like we did with the other one. But just being very mindful of the metal frame because there are grooves inside the shell where it fits in. Uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit but yeah the frame just sort of fits in like a glove where it's supposed to sit and nothing should be sticking out or anything like that. Insert the sensor at the bottom part like so and just doing a quick check that the buttons and everything are in place. I'm gonna set it back down and put the screws back on. Once you've done this it's not actually that difficult I feel. I'm actually able to do the pair within like 20-ish minutes <laughs> because I'm just so used to swapping shells at this point and know where everything goes. But the first time is always the most daunting, especially if you don't deal with electronics that much. But you know, if I can do it, I really think that anyone can. Okay, now taking a quick break from that again and we're going to do the middle part like last time. And this one is pretty much very, very similar. We're just gonna pop off the button ribbon cable is swapped over. Now we're going to do pretty much the same thing with the springs as before. Putting it on the grooves here and here. And then finding the same notches, just aligning it onto the springs. And once it's aligned, just snap it back on. Assembly time. <laughs> I'm gonna grab that other shoulder button. Everything at this point is pretty much the same. So putting it on the cross and aligning it in the little nook. 
So there is the little nook right there. Reconnecting the ribbon cable. This one is slightly trickier just because it's twisted, but with patience, you should be able to push the ribbon back in and pop the lock back on. Once that is on there, then we can just put everything back as it was like so and then we will just screw everything back in place here here and here final touch will just be these buttons once more taking this button and securing the rails back The very final step of this tutorial, the most satisfying part, I think, because everything's finally, you know, come together. So hopefully those who are following along with me have found that it's not actually, you know, as difficult as it might seem. It just takes time and um, patience is a huge thing as well because you're dealing with really small parts, some being very fragile as well. And as we know, replacing Joy-Cons aren't exactly the cheapest. So if you had to, replace a whole controller just because of one mistake that wouldn't be you know exactly the funnest here we go i'm so excited this looks incredible oh my gosh i don't even know where to begin right now I hope this tutorial helped you in some way. Let me know below for those following along how your Joy-Con reshell turned out. Or if you haven't done it yet, let me know what you're planning on doing to customize your Nintendo Switch or Switch Lite. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.